In this presentation, we will enter a sales receipt and the related deposit. In other words, we'll enter the sales receipt as if we made a sale within the store, the sale happening at the same point in time we got the money. Then we're gonna deposit that into the bank along with any other funds that we currently have, making that deposit in our system in a format that will match what will be seen on the bank reconciliation. It's time to get started with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're currently in the Customer and Sales section. We're going to be scrolling down and going to our Receive Money, where we're going to have a Receive Payment. We're imagining we're going to be receiving that payment uh, in the store, so we can kind of think of like this is our cash register type of point of sale uh, receiving payment, like a restaurant type of situation, but we sell guitars here. And we would be making the sale at that point in time. And then we're going to be recording the deposit. Now, the way we're going to record the deposit is to put this into a clearing up account first and then transfer it from that clearing account, the cash on hand, into our checking account in the same format that it will be seen on the bank statement. Note, you can also do that with the ticket system as we've seen in the past and uh, not have the deposit ticket on the receive payment, but then use the bank deposit form in order to, to do that. We've seen that in prior presentations. We're going to use the clearing account here. So I'm going to go to the receive money. We're going to go to the receive money from customer. I'm going to maximize this screen, and then we're going to be choosing our customer. We're going to have a new customer up top, so I'm going to select the drop down, and we're going to go into, and then we're going to say new because we want a new customer. And it'll open up the data input screen. Uh, our new customer's name is going to be Garcia, Garcia Guitar. So I'll maximize this and we're going to type in here then uh, Garcia Guitar. And that's the one we want. I'm going to just copy that name and that's going to be the ID and I'll put the same in the name field. That's going to be all I'm going to put for the information here to populate it. I'm going to then say save. So there's our going to be our new customer and then close this out. Then we'll go back up top and I'm going to put a deposit. I'm just I'm going to put a ticket here. I'm going to say that it's going to be going to Garcia Guitar now. So there we have that. I'm just going to put a reference number. And then we're going to say that the date is going to be the 14th again. So we'll bring this on back to the 14th once again. It's a popular day for us. A lot of action that day. We'll keep it at cash. And then I'm going to go down and put populate the inventory item. So we're going to say the quantity will be one and we want an Epiphone, an ELP, one of our standard Epiphone Les Pauls. So $500, we're going to have one of those. We will be applying the sales tax to it. So we'll apply the sales tax here and we're going to say that's the one we want. So there we have it and that'll populate the amount then at the 547.50. What's going to happen when we record this? It's going to be increasing the cash on hand, which is basically our clearing account that we will then put into the bank by the full amount of $547.50. Then the revenue is going to go up by the amount that we charged, the $500. The difference will be the sales tax, $47.50, increasing the accounts payable. We will also have a decrease in the inventory of the Epiphone Les Paul, not for a dollar amount on this form, but it will be driven by this form, driven by this uh, inventory item I believe it's 400 I, we've done this ELP a few times so I think it's 400 and then the other side is going to be going to the cost of goods sold increase in the expense account which will decrease net income net effect on net income increase in the revenue 500 uh, minus the increase in cost of goods sold which I believe will be 400 net income increase net 200 or 100 all right let's check it out we're gonna say save and then uh, close this back out. Let's, t let's take a look since we have seen this form before with the trial balance. So we're going to go on down to the general ledger reports. We are in the general ledger. We want to be opening the working trial balance. We'll change the options up top. So we'll go up to the options up top in order to do so. And then I'm going to select the period. We'll have a specific period ending for the end of February. That being February 29, 29 days in February. I'm going to remove the zero balances, so we're going to remove those and say OK. All right, so then the cash on hand should be going up. If I double click on the cash on hand, there's the 547.50. That's for the full amount on the uh, sales receipt. So there it is on the full amount, including the sales tax. The other side then going into revenue, which is going to be on the bottom. It'd be, it would be on the income statement, which is on the bottom of the trial balance. So we're in the 400 uh, type numbers down here. We have the sales of income, the 2,967. Uh, 
There it is. It's increasing for 500, the amount that we charged, not including the sales tax. The sales tax then being the difference is going to go into a liability account called sales tax payable. So if we double click on the sales tax payable, then there's the 4750 that went into it from our sale. We also know that the inventory will be going down. So if we go on up to the inventory item up top, here is our inventory item. Double clicking on that item. We see that the inventory would be decreasing by the amount of the 400 so there's the 400 decrease see i knew it was 400 and it was not and that amount isn't on the actual form but it's being driven by the item so that's decreasing by the 400 closing that back out closing this back out other side on the income statement in the form of cost of goods sold cost of goods sold double clicking on that item it being increased by the 400 here let's close that back out now we're going to record the deposit. So now we're going to record the deposit. What's going to happen? The cash on hand is going to then be going down. We're going to put it into the checking account. It'll then go in the checking account in the same format as we expect the grouping to be on the bank statement, making the bank reconciliation process easy. Let's repeat this process first for a service item, and then we'll record the deposit. So I'm going to go back on over. I'm going to close the reports. We don't need that. I'm going to go back on and over and say, let's say a receive payment. We're going to receive another payment here and this time i'm going to I'm, I'm going to make the ticket up top we're going to say that uh, we'll choose an existing customer this time let's say uh, string music and then we'll populate i'm just going to pick a reference number and receipt number i'm going to say this happened on the 15th let's say let's get off of the 14th since we have a lot going on on the 14th and this time let's pick a service item down here so i'm going to say quantity let's say four on the service item and we're going to be picking up a service item which will have the hour service so hour service and that'll bring us up to the 560. so this one what's this one going to do increase the cash the other side then go into the revenue account for the for the service items no sales tax no inventory no cost of goods sold let's go ahead and save that so we're going to save that i'm going to close this and check it out so we'll go on back to our trial balance we then see an increase or an increase in in the cash of the 1407 there's the uh, string music that we put in place uh, this one i believe is the one 560 the other side then going to revenue which is going to be on the bottom of the trial balance so we're on the bottom we're in the service items so within the service items we'll see the revenue of the 560. okay so now let's close this back out and let's make our deposit now so we're going to take it out of the cash on hand put it into the checking account so we're going to go back on over to our our information on the left i would typically do this i'm going to do this with the banking section on the left hand side and go straight to the register so i want to go to the account register i'm going to open that up i like to see the register for the uh, cash on hand account because that's going to be the clearing account that everything that's in there i'm going to remove so there's 1407 in it 50 and 50 cents <laughs> and we're going to take it out of there and we're going to put it into the uh into the bank into the checking account so let's make this as of the 16th let's say so i'm going to bring this on back to the 16th this is going to be a payment from this account it's going out of this account into the checking account the the reference number i'm going to say transfer and then uh the pay is going to be it's going to be a transfer and then i'm going to say the gl number is going to be the same as the transfer up here so it's 1020 which is our checking account so it's going into our checking account and then i'm going to say tab i'm going to call it a transfer the payment is going to be for the full amount that's in there right now, which of course, once again, is at 1407.50. So 1407.50. So there we have that. And that looks good. Let's go ahead and save that. Then our balance should, should go down to zero. So that transfer number has already been, I'm going to say, okay. And now that makes the balance go back down to zero. Let's check it out in our, our uh, financials now. So I'm going to go back over to the financial statements. And you'll see that the uh, cash on hand went to zero. If we go into the checking account, double clicking on the checking account, see the deposit here of the 140750. So there's going to be our deposit. Double clicking on that takes us to our register. 
closing this back out, closing this back out. Then the other side's in the cash on hand account. We can't see it because it's now at zero. If we wanted to see it to double check it, we could go to the options up top so we could still use our kind of drill down feature on it. And I'd say, hey, look, I'd like to see the zero balance amounts and then say, okay. And then we can go into the zero balance amount and use our zoom feature to see the transfer. And that's what should always happen with this account. It should, it should, you know, it goes up and then it goes back down, right? It's going to go up and then it's going to go back, back down because this will be uh, a holding account in the format that we are using it. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.